While we look down at our phones They'll drop a bomb from a drone Then an explosion We should've known it Thursday, October 26th, 2023, and I have an emergency alert to share with you guys. So I want to just update you on the Middle East and uh, obviously all this activity we're seeing with the doomsday plane and the two nuclear war command and control planes up in the air today. And then these two bombers leaving Guam has a lot to do with what's going on in the Middle East. Guys, our nuclear forces are on high alert, okay? I personally believe we are at DEFCON 2, and I think we've been at DEFCON 2 for a while now. Now, I have a viewer who lives near Raven Rock, which is the alternate National Military Command Center. This is where our uh, defense officials would go and our top generals during a nuclear war, and they would command our nuclear arsenal from Raven Rock. And so this viewer told me that the last four days, They've seen unusual military activity in the area, okay? And a white colored plane flew over the area, which could have either been an E 4, a doomsday plane, or an E 6, a nuclear war command and control plane. So, according to Politico, citing a Pentagon source, at least 19 American soldiers have been diagnosed with traumatic brain injury as a result of the pro-Iranian militia attacks on U.S. military bases in Iraq and Syria over the last two weeks. Okay, I personally believe that there's potentially hundreds of Americans that are being held hostage right now by Hamas in those tunnels underneath Gaza, and there's rumors floating around that the U.S. may pump in some kind of a gas into those tunnels to... Uh, try to free the hostages. What kind of gas that is, I have no idea. Okay, the Washington Post is reporting that Biden is investigating the possibility of striking Iran's satellites in the Middle East and that the Biden administration is concerned about attacks on American bases and they may begin uh, soon attacking the pro-Iranian groups in response. Um, so this is pretty serious, guys, okay? The Iranian foreign minister warned the U.S. of an unimaginable response if its facilities are attacked. If the U.S. strikes Iran and its associated infrastructure, the response will be beyond all imagination. Okay, that's what the Iranian foreign minister said. Okay, that is crazy, guys. And the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps Deputy Commander-in-Chief Fadavi said, we have technologies in the military field that no one knows about, and the Americans will know about them when we use them. So last night, the Israeli Defense Forces carried out some kind of significant ground operation in the Gaza Strip involving a number of armored vehicles with mounted infantry and tanks. This operation is claimed to have been much larger and penetrated deeper into Gaza than previous raids with the goal being the destruction of forward positions used by Hamas and the strengthening of defenses near the border fence. And that's what you're looking at right here. This is uh, thermal uh, imagery provided by the Israeli Defense Forces uh, showing them uh, conducting this ground operation, okay, where they entered into uh, Gaza with tanks. Okay, look at this, guys. Here's the border fence. You can see a bunch of tanks here. OK, uh, footage has been released showing the armored assault last night by the Israeli Defense Force involving a number of Merkava main battle tanks, Caterpillar D9 armored bulldozers and Puma armored engineering vehicles. So our military is at the highest level of readiness. Our nuclear forces. All right, so 
If you don't think it's World War III, let me tell you what time it is. Take a look at this spectacle. The Egyptians are throwing several divisions of troops and heavy hitting military equipment near the Israeli border. Well, yes, there's active shooter stuff going on. We're also seeing uh, foiled plans of truck attacks around the world. Just, I mean, the list goes on. Sleeper cells coming over the border. This, this conflagration is about to explode. NATO is going to do its steadfast noon nuclear exercise. We're going to see your nuclear exercise and we're going to raise you one retaliatory practice nuclear strike. Get a load of this. Imagine you're Russian in the current state of affairs and you didn't get the memo and you see an intercontinental ballistic missile blazing overhead in the wee hours of the morning. They were also launching numerous other uh, ICBMs, one from a Tula submarine in the Barents Sea, also launching missiles from TU-95 Bear Bomber aircraft, all right? And all of this happened on the same day. And remember now, this is all overseen by Vladimir Putin himself. Now today, Zelensky, trying to remain relevant in the minds of the West, comes out and says, Russia targeted a nuclear power plant. Now, remember, we've been saying this for some time that the way they're gonna get back in the news is either by targeting a nuclear power plant or, or something which is gonna bring eyes back in that direction. But they're not gonna do that until they get the cue from Washington. Apparently, this was the explosion that looked like a frickin' nuclear explosion. And I gotta say, I gotta say, some of these explosions, I know this wasn't a nuclear explosion, but would we ever really know if they used low, low yield tactical nukes? Especially, yes, they have radiation detection devices, but do they have that everywhere? You know, would the seismic be able to really pick it up? If we're talking about mini Davy Crockett style tactical nukes, do you think that they could use something like that and uh, it go unnoticed? Especially when you're gonna have fighting everywhere. Describe Raven Rock to me, like what it is, to what it's for. No. Raven Rock, like Area 51, remains one of the U.S. government's most classified installations. It's all part of a plan that was hatched 70 years ago. In the 1950s, the government came up with plans for a deep underground command center where the president and, you know, a few hundred staff members not only could take shelter, but also could direct a nuclear war. The plan is called Continuity of Government, or COG. At any moment, we could see thousands of members of the government completely wiped out, but there's a secondary government, a shadow government that is ready to take over at a moment's notice. Raven Rock is an underground backup Pentagon. It's the most unbelievable place you can imagine. You're 768 feet below the surface. Don Camel spent three and a half years at Raven Rock as part of the president's communication team. He's never spoken on camera before about his time working in the secret bunker. Basically, they carved out a city underground that could survive a direct hit from a nuclear blast. After you go through the security, you walk in and it's basically an underground tunnel. There's a glass door that was three and a half foot thick that weighed 30 tons. Uh, you go through like an airlock, and they had two of those doors, and then you walk another uh, half a mile. A half mile deeper into the mountain is the bunker itself. And you're going past five buildings. Those represent the five rings of the Pentagon. And each of those buildings are three stories tall, and they probably have 50 to 80 offices per floor. So get a load of this. This is what's going down. As far as I can tell, it appears as though they're trying to get the THAAD and Patriot missile batteries in place prior to doing any sort of Gaza invasion. Because what's going to happen after the Gaza invasion is it's going to rile up all the uh, Iranian-backed militias. They got to get these THAAD missile defense systems in place in Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Jordan, Iraq, United Arab Emirates, and Qatar prior to the invasion of Gaza. Why? 
because chances are this is going to rile up all the militias, like I said, and of course this is to put Iran on notice. What this is, is mission creep towards war with Iran. Can they succeed in a ground invasion against Iran? It is very unlikely. We're probably years out from them having the capabilities to do that. What they can do is get in a shooting match, and of course the risk of that is, is that things can potentially go nuclear. Many people suspect, myself included, that Iran, Iran already has nuclear capabilities, or in the very least, uh, has the ability to quickly uh, convert their fissionable material and put it on a bomb. So clearly the United States is leapfrogging over Israel using this as an excuse to justify more intervention in the Middle East in the same way they did 9-11. I mean, this is exactly the same uh, right out of that playbook, okay? CIA playbook, you get your 9-11 situation, you exploit the crisis for as much as you can, you use it as justification to go invade a country that had nothing to do with it, and uh, the same thing is going to happen here. They're using the, the uh, terrorist attacks but committed by Hamas against Israel to justify broader involvement in the Middle East. It, this is not that complicated. Remember, they everything that the Iranians have is underground. They've been planning for this forever, okay? They have extensive underground, deep underground military complexes that you could hit with nuclear weapons and not destroy. Nuclear, bunker busting, it doesn't matter. You're not going to be able to, to destroy everything that Iran has to offer. And unfortunately, because the U.S is uh, relegated to fighting the fort that is Iran with ships, resupply is going to be difficult. And now we know why they've been hoarding a lot of their best weapons and not wanting to give them all to Ukraine, because this region is absolutely geopolitically strategic for national security, especially in light of the fact that the Russian oil is potentially removed from our markets, even though there's a lot of ways around that. So what we know is that the uh, IRGC underground missile and drone bases along the Persian Gulf and Sea of Oman coast have all been moved to an offensive posture in, in response to the expansion of the U.S. military presence in the region. We also have the commander of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard saying that Iran will not hesitate to launch an attack on Israel if ordered. Remember, the threat here is that Iran has a nuclear deterrent already, which is undisclosed. Would the flood of Iranian oil into the market, would there be big players who don't want that? Because Iran has a ton of oil. I think they might even have more oil than Iraq. If that oil was to make its way to the market and not be sanctioned, the Chinese would love that. Okay, the Chinese want cheap oil. Who doesn't want cheap oil? The Russians, the Saudis, all these things factor in. Again, yes, Gaza is a major situation that is going to rile up all the crazy militia groups throughout the region and it's going to create all kinds of uh, uh, chaos and probably mostly isolated attacks across the world. Elon Musk says we are sleepwalking our way into World War III. And he's correct. And I decided to use this story from the Post Mono to lead off because it was uh, the least shocking. Sure, I could lead with the Pentagon saying they will hold Iran accountable for attacking our military bases. There's Bloomberg, U.S. carrier strike group deployed to Middle East after Iran is deemed responsible for attacks on U.S. military bases. Israel has declared to the press yesterday that Iran was involved in the Hamas attack on Israel, the terror attack that killed over 1,000 around 1,400 Israeli civilians, many more taken hostage. And it would seem the conflict is going to eventually wrap in to World War III.